Good day to you, one and all. It is I, Justin Hawkins, and this is Justin Hawkins Rides Again, my YouTube channel. The time has come for me to discuss Green Day. Green Day, rather. A band who are responsible for popularising uh, punk rock in the US and States. Way in the mainstream, anyway. And they've sold more than 90 million records worldwide as of 2017. Green Day's sound is often compared to the first wave punk bands, such as The Ramones, The Sex Pistols, the Clash, The Dickies, and Buzzcocks. So, I'll do my theme tune, and then we'll crack on with it. Justin Hawkins rides again. Again. Um, I remember the first time I heard American Idiot. It was played through a Naeem stereo. So, it was, you know, that's a... It was a fairly top-end English hi-fi system, and um, I was pretty blown away by how brilliant the mix was and how much energy and power there was in it. I think it was mixed by Chris Lord Algie and uh, probably produced by Rob Cavallo. It's the Green Day sound. They formed in 1987. Can you believe that? American Idiot was released in 2004 on Reprise Records, cracking little label, um, which was founded in 1960 by Frank Sinatra. So you know it's good. Um, it's actually part of the Warners group, so it's a subsidiary of that. A mini major, perhaps, something like that. I think we need to do an episode on the, how music companies are structured because it's changed so much. And I don't know, I think um, when you have a, a subsidiary of a major like that, there's a lot more clout, I think. I think when, when you take a record and you want to service it to for example, the radio stations, you might be able to say to them, well, look, um, if you play this song by Green Day, you can have an exclusive interview with one of our other artists, James Blunt, for example. Or I'm sure that there's deals like that that can be done. It just carries a lot more weight when you're on Warners, I think. And it's interesting that like a band that is credited as having popularised mainstream interest in punk um, would be signed to something that is more or less the Death Star of the music trade. Um, but I think when it says punk, I don't, I don't think it's talking about the homespun kind of self-released punk that we associate with that word. We're talking about just the aesthetic of it, the power and the rawness of the recordings and, and you know, perhaps even the hairstyles. Green Day look like a punk band, don't they? There's uh, a black shirt with a red tie and there's tattoos and short spiky haircuts going around but i should have spiked my hair up for this sorry guys i just thought the nearest to punk i could get was a, a human centipede themed um teamwork makes the dream work shirt with when they're sort of sharing the digestive tra oh it doesn't matter about that so yeah american idiot it's considered that one of their signature songs i mean it, i think it came pretty late in their career really i mean they've already recorded loads of stuff and you hear loads of, loads of the uh, earlier Green Day stuff has always been a touchstone for the alternative rock DJ in a club. It was ranked number 13 uh, single of the decade by Rolling Stone in 2009. VH1 placed the song at number 13 in its top 100 songs of the 2000s and Rolling Stone ranked it number 432 of the 500 greatest songs of all time. So, you know, this is a well thought of piece of music by critics and I think punters alike. Let's have a listen. Listen to how powerful that is. It's ridiculous. I think I've figured out the riff. Isn't it? But I might be playing that in the wrong key on account of some... Sounds like they might be one of those bands that, that perhaps detunes their their guitars by a semitone. It's very common with American bands, actually, I've noticed. I think there's a temptation to suggest that that makes life easier for the singer, but I don't think it really does. It doesn't make all that much difference. I mean, obviously, there's going to be a subtle, perhaps a little bit more effort required when you get up the dusty end of your vocal range. But, um, but the advantage that it does have is that the guitars just sound a bit more flappy, a bit more powerful, um, just a bit beefier, even with sort of traditional tuning. You don't have to get into the, the murky world of a, of a drop D to um, do something that sounds hard, you know. <laughs> I 
<laughs> you could put a capo on the uh, fourth fret with a traditional, you know, standard tuning guitar. If you want it to sound like, you know, late period Buddy Holly. Yeah. I wanna be an American idiot. I love the drums on this because he's kind of, uh, he's definitely done that, the punk thing. A, a, a posher drummer would probably just be like. <laughs> the hi-hat pattern, I think he's. he's <laughs> but I think a posher drummer might just go. You know, <laughs> but he's going. <laughs> which gives it a really brilliant stiffness, you know, so. The, the excitement and the swing of, is all coming from the guitars and then you've got this sort of really stiff drummer who's definitely capable of, of doing like um, something much posher and has chosen not to. I always applaud those decisions because it's sort of, um, sometimes it isn't the right thing to put swing on something, you know, and luxuriating in a, in a hi-hat pattern isn't always the correct choice and in this, on this occasion is, I think everybody's chosen exactly the right thing to play. And then the production gets really posh in that pre-chorus. Welcome to a new kind of attention. There's at least two voices singing in unison, probably hard panned. Maybe there's another one down the middle. But it, it gives it this sort of really sort of posh 70s uh, radio rock vibe to it. It's a very easy thing to achieve. But you do have to be a consistent singer to get it sounding like this, where there's only like a subtle beating between the, 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 the vocal takes that he's done there. And... Um, I mean, you can do it with a, probably with a pedal or something, but this this sounds authentic to me. You know, it's it's a really solid, precise vocal. He sings really well on this stuff, I think. You know, when you hear that little posh bit of jungle, you know, sort of tribal tom work with the, from the drummer, you know, you know that he's uh, an accomplished player. I just love how simple he keeps it. And there's plenty of jumping around by the bass player. That's always a sign of a, of a modern po punk thing. I'm not sure if the Sex Pistols did as much of that, really. But the jumping, it's the jump and tuck. So I don't know how to just demonstrate this without making a complete tit of myself. So I'm going to do it anyway. Um, just um, So, you know, I think the difference between rock and punk is this. It's in the jump. Like a rocker, a David Lee Roth will jump and he'll try and do a split jump. Um, but a punker will turn slightly to the side and he'll give it this one, the tuck, thus achieving more air between the foot and the stage itself. Um, I always go for like a cod sort of gymnastics jump like this. Um, it never occurs to me to do that one. I just always try and get air between my ass and the thing. So that means getting my legs up as, as high as I can get them. It's all in the details, guys. I love that um, pre-chorus, that welcome to a new kind of tension. Because you hear another guitar roar in and then suddenly the stereo image of that, of that sort of nasty guitar that's playing the riff, um, it gets super wide. And then if you're wearing headphones, it's a really impressive moment. The mix on this is sublime. Yeah, there's some really cool bits where they seem to be going like this. Like I'll, I'll play it in a different, different key just to show you this uh, thing. So, um. there's, this, there's a lot of um, moments where it's. Oh. They just hit that chord. You know, in uh, I think in the Joy Division song. Um, you know, love will tear us apart. I think the first chord you hear in that is uh, standard tuning guitar, E A D G B E, all together, no fingers on it at all. And then I think that's that's how a lot of these sort of Green Day guitar parts are introduced. So it's like that's just the most attitude you can have is just hitting a guitar. Like that. often in rehearsal, you'll find a band that uh, has 
perhaps focus too hard on a part of a song will just get really frustrated and just do this. And I think what they've done is is incorporate that the frustration of that into this uh, into this riff. Love it. So then that guitar motif, which is sort of more or less follows the melody from the from the B section. Starts off on the major third of the first chord, you know. So like um if it's an A. It's not an A, it's a it's a uh, C sharp, I think. And the third chord, um, it does the same thing. It ends up on the major third of the third chord. Sorry, that's really boring, isn't it? But it has a, a really uplifting effect because I think that, that you know the fact that the harmonic information you're getting from the melody uh, that it's really accenting and hammering home is the fact that these are major chords. Um, so it makes you smile almost, doesn't it? It's sort of it's just happy sounding. Just sounds like really good fun to play. Every instrument's just doing something really satisfying, really rewarding. Not not especially complicated. I always think that um, songs that cross over like this um, have, you know, obviously it's got loads of rawness and the punk energy and everything. But ultimately, it just sounds like it's fun to play it. And this stuff's really tight. It's weird how punk is become so tight, isn't it? I always thought it was supposed to be loose and angry and sloppy and but it sounds so accomplished. It's still got that attitude. It's getting it, it's getting it from somewhere else, you know. It's really good. You know, it just comes out the gates flying. It's uh, super stiff, really exciting, um, accomplished in the right ways, brilliant production. Of course it was gonna be a hit. It's really catchy as well. Oh, brilliant stuff. I always loved that song. Now I know why. Justin Hawkins writes again. Again. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and watch one of these two videos. Nice one, guys. See you later. All right. Yeah, nice.